So again, there's very little science um, on the basis, uh, to answer that on, a, on the basis of data. Um, the expectation or the general understanding is that there's injury to the lining of the gut that involves the nervous system of, of the gut, the sensory apparatus in the gut that's also injured by the inflammatory process. Although the lining of the intestine uh, recovers quite quickly, the uh, surface lining cells of the lining of the gut replace themselves every few days, um, the nerve cells don't recover nearly as efficiently and sometimes incompletely so that the condition which we refer to as visceral hyperalgesia um, can result from nerve injury that's long lasting even though the inflammatory process has resolved. Patients with eosinophilic esophagitis often will undergo repeated endoscopies to monitor whether inflammation is present or not. There can be times when the endoscopy looks normal and uh, patients may continue to have symptoms. And the symptoms often can be abdominal pain or problems with swallowing. The reasons for that can be the fact that the inflammation may have been missed at the time of the endoscopy, the inflammation may be deeper than the biopsy can be obtained, or there are other causes for the inflammation to be present, such as reflux disease, uh, scars or narrowing, or uh, abdominal pain caused by other etiologies. Um, very uh, real question, and I think that's where the patient engagement really comes in because after a while in a certain condition, people, you kind of get a tunnel vision maybe or put blinders on or may think that this is what it is and uh, keep on treating a condition which may not be the only reason. So if the symptoms are persistent and things are not adding up, either taking a step back as a parent or as a patient or as a provider of ideally combo and say, you know what, it's not making sense. I have cleared your scope, you're on good treatment, you're compliant but you are still suffering, am I missing something? So I would say maybe take a step back at that point and see, okay, could there be another process? You know, as, as people would say, you, ca you can't have measles and a broken leg at the same time. So you can, in the sense, have inflammation, EOE or EGID, but something else going on simultaneously that could be a confounder. Now, I'll, I'll uh, uh, qualify that within pediatrics, especially we try and uh, uniformalize all the diagnosis into one. Instead of giving 10 diagnoses, as you may see in an adult, in pediatrics we try and keep everything you know, as narrow or as concise as possible. So, but I think it's really very important if things don't make sense that you take a step back and see, okay, what's going on here.